Okay, so welcome to our final step. In order to create this beautiful composition, we are gonna be painting in between the lines that we created yesterday. So as you guys can see, we're gonna to try to make sure that the same color doesn't touch. That's kind of my only, my only rule with this. So let's go to our step from yesterday. We have our leaves drawn, we drew our repeating lines over and over again around our shapes, and we did it in either oil pastel or crayons. We want a waxy texture to keep our paint inside the lines. Now, if you don't have these supplies, that's okay. Right now, if you're sitting here and you're like, I don't have watercolor. If you don't have watercolors, that's okay. You guys can use markers to put your color in between. And if you have a paintbrush, you could add a wet paintbrush and it'll make your colors of the marker turn into paint. And so there's just so many ways around not having the supplies we have right now. All right. So right now I'm going to get my materials ready. I have my paper prepared. I have my watercolors. I have a paintbrush and a cup of water. All right. So what I want to make sure I'm doing is I'm going to fill in my leaves first. All right. So for these leaves, I want to still stick with that fall theme. So I want to still stick with my fall colors. So in this case, I'm going to start with the yellow one and I want to make sure that my colors are going to be fall. So that means like my oranges, browns, reds, yellows. So within the shape of my leaf, I'm going to use fall colors and a fair amount of water because it gets the colors to blend together and create kind of a tie-dyed effect which looks so natural and beautiful and as you guys can see the water in my paint tends to not want to stay on top of the crayon or the oil pastel. So we still get to keep our beautiful lines, which is really what our whole project is about. And we're now starting to apply our knowledge about color that we had earlier on in our school year. So right now there's just a lot of warm colors going on, even though this one is just a series of yellows, browns, orange and a lot of water so notice every time I go to get some more color I want to wet my brush okay so that's looking looking pretty good I want to keep my paper fairly flat but just so you guys can see it'll tilt it upwards for this orange one I think I want to add a little purple because sometimes in the fall you definitely get a couple of purples in there in our leaves so let's add a little bit of purple and I'm going to use a little bit of red. I think that'll look really beautiful with my orange lines. This is going to just be so nice. I can't wait to see it. You guys are going to have such beautiful work of art in your sketchbooks. I look forward to you guys sharing these with me. It's going to be spectacular. Okay, guys, and if you notice your paintbrush is getting kind of scratchy, that means you got to go add more water to it. Has it looking pretty good. And when it dries, it looks even better. So for this one, let's see what we haven't really done. I'm going to do a little bit of green, I think. In the fall, you're still going to have a couple of trees out there that hold on to their green. <laughs> and let's do a little bit of yellow. You guys, you don't have to copy mine. It's okay. You can always go ahead and do the colors that you want to do. Of course, that's the beauty of just creating your own work. Is you can choose whatever it is you want to do. I'm just here to show you guys the basic steps. Oh my gosh, that's looking just awesome. Okay, so now what I want to start doing is creating, just like what I did with the oil pastels, I'm going to start applying different colors in between. So I want to start out maybe with a blue and I'm going to try to fill in this section here. And again, if you don't have paints at home, take a marker, take a color pencil, color in the area around your leaves. But you're going to go line by line. So we are practicing our brush control our color choices, 
not just to create this really beautiful composition around our leaves. This is just going to look so spectacular. So that's why we broke up our project into three days. It does take a little bit of time, which is why I want you guys to be able to take breaks and to look at your work throughout each step. All right, so understand you guys, I didn't want you to do all of this in one day. We're going to take a couple of days to do this project. And take your time. I'm going to keep my paintbrush vertical. That way it doesn't flatten out and fill up the area so quickly. That's just one little thing you kind of learn as you continue to paint and become more familiar with your materials is just how to control the brush, how to control your paint. Notice I'm trying to keep my paintbrush very vertical and it keeps a lot of the control in my hands. If you add too much water, you're not going to have as much control either. And for some parts of your project, that's a good thing. Like when we're coloring, you're coloring in the leaves and you want the colors to bleed and blend. But for this kind of thing, you want to have some control. So you want your paintbrush to be moist. You want it to still activate the paints in the palette, but you don't want it to be a big puddle of runny water. Otherwise, you lose control. Wonderful. I'm going to do another color. Maybe do a little... Um, I'll do a red next. All right, so I'm gonna just start filling in my whole piece of artwork until the whole paper is filled. All right, guys, good luck. I can't wait to see how yours look. They're gonna be beautiful.